I'm honored to be joined today by filmmaker Francis Hibbs of F1 Films. Francis, thank you for joining me, and I, I want to start immediately uh, by, of course, extending our condolences about your father passing during the pandemic. Well, first, thank you very much for having me today, Brian, and I appreciate the kind words. It's been, uh, it's been tough. 73 years old, diabetic, unfortunately, you know, didn't stand a chance. We've been conducting Tap Into TV interviews remotely, like we are, during the pandemic. And um, a theme during my conversations has been lighter topics and, and good news, but we can't avoid the losses and we can't avoid the sad news. And, uh, and again, we're, we're terribly sorry to learn of the passing of your dad. And would, would you remember him for us and, uh, and tell, tell me what influence he had on you, please? I'd be honored to. So, I mean, he's worked in the film industry, you know, his earlier life. That's where I got it from. He worked on a Amityville horror movie that was shot back in the seventies right here in New Jersey. Sure. Wow. Um, his father was, uh, you know, he did lighting for theater in New York for Broadway, off Broadway. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it runs in the blood. And, you know, I grew up around it. Uh, you know, I'm just fully into it, fully immersed into filmmaking, every aspect of it. It's it's kind of in my blood. And, you know, I got all that from him. You know, he was the first one to ever put a camera in my hand. Wow. And teach me, you know, how to use F-stops. Well, F-stops, and the name of your company is F1 Films but I wanted to have you on today to talk a little bit about your independent film career. Tell me about your project City of Dreams. Uh, my project City of Dreams uh, started off as a short film, uh, played in the festivals, great response. I think there's like so many more levels to that story to explore, you know, focusing on each character, their backstories. You know, it does have like a dream element mixed with a film noir. You know, creatively, you can go various different places and, you know, keep the people engaged, be entertained by something, you know, you've never seen before, I feel. Can people see this online or is there a place people can, can check that out? On my YouTube channel, I'll be posting it up. It's It just finished its uh, festival run. So within the next week, you know, I'm going to start posting up on my Instagrams at F1 Films uh, to go watch it on my YouTube channel, which is also F1 Films. So uh, during the pandemic, I mean, of course, again, you've had loss in your family, but I, I'd like to ask people, what does the world look like outside your window? You know, what's your environment like? What's your neighborhood like? Um, it's a mix. Lots of people, for the most part, take it seriously. Everyone's wearing masks and all that, and you have an equal amount doing the opposite. So hmm. you can even tell there's a pandemic going on, like there's still construction going on, work going on, all that type of stuff. Yeah. You know, obviously restaurants are closed here, but it's something I take very seriously, obviously. Of course. I mean, certainly the pandemic has affected the film business, you know, the film and television business. Um, yes. What's your prediction? You know, what's the future going to hold for film and television production? What do you what do you think? I mean, it's going to be a while. I think we'll really know what's going on come the fall whether this is going to be here for a while or you know, it's going to pass. But I think people are going to be eager to get back to the theater. Netflix and Amazon clearly doing very well. Yeah. But I mean, there's always room for content. And I think it's going to change in ways that we can't even imagine right now. True. But we're, as filmmakers, we're always going to be creating. There's always going to be a market for us. It's just going to be a different landscape, I think. Last question, we'll wrap it up. If I gave you the blank check, right, and you were going to make <laughs> the film of your dreams, do anything you want, what would you do? That's a good question. <laughs> Didn't see that one coming. <laughs> no, no, you got me on that one. I'll have an answer. I'd make all of them. I have at least five or six concepts. I could make all of them within that whatever budget. I like that answer. <laughs> it's not one film. I'm going to do them all. I would do them all, and you'd probably have money coming back to you. <laughs> wow, it's amazing. Uh, listen, Francis, thank you uh, for joining me. And, and again, from everybody here, we're so sorry to hear about the passing of your father. I am very honored to be here today. It was a great experience, and thank you very much for having me, Brian. We'll catch up soon, and please stay safe and healthy. 
Thank you.